words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be always acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, our strength and our redeemer. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. <coughs> The older I get, the more that I realize that God is so much more than I can fully comprehend. Mere words cannot express who God is, because God is beyond even language. Christians have struggled for centuries to express within the limitations of human language the unique revelation God makes of God's mode of existence. We struggle because language is a finite means of communication. Finite minds are trying to express in words the infinite truth of an infinite God. At times, we simply cannot say what we need to say to get at the grandeur that is our God. Our language fails us when it comes to expressing who God is. We do the best we can and we try to use examples to communicate who God is, but this also proves to be inadequate because there is nothing that can compare to God. God is incomparable. God is truly and completely unique. You know, when my children used to ask me uh, about a new food and how that new food uh, would, would taste that they haven't tasted before, we, we, we would compare it to something that they, that they knew about. Might say, well, it, it tastes like chicken, or, or, or it tastes like like that fish over there. But even though we may not know or be at the point where we can express exactly what it tastes like, it is usually close enough to give them some kind of idea. But with God, one must taste God for yourself. There is none like God. That is why the Bible declares, oh, taste and see that the Lord indeed is good. And when we have tasted of God, there is no way to fully describe what we have experienced because language is limited when it comes to describing the limitlessness of God. Our language is based upon time. And when we consider time, we speak of the past, we speak of the present, and we speak of the future. But God is not limited to time. God is timeless. God transcends all boundaries of time, and we as humans can only think as time-based folk, time-limited creatures. But the fact of the matter is that God was when time was not. God stepped into time and spoke to the nebulous blob of nothingness and created. This same God is the God who preached to what was not until what was not became what was. This is the same God who spoke the word let and all legions of possibility started to move and all the powers of maybe got up rank on rank. Imagine with me for a moment. God said let and all that might be came rushing to the fore, fore. And God said, let there be. And all that was not started straining to become. God defies full description. And so when we seek to understand God, we must look at how God has revealed God's self in time. How God disclosed to humans God's nature. And in order to do this, we first turn to Scripture. And Scripture has revealed God as Trinity. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. God as Trinity 
And you know, God as Trinity may be defined, I think, as the following. You can take out your pens and your pads here and take notes. Within the one being <clears throat> that is God, there exists eternally three co-equal and co-eternal persons, namely the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. I see y'all right, so I'm going to say it again. Within the one being that is God, there exists eternally three co-equal and co-eternal persons, namely the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. God has revealed himself to us. God has revealed God's self to us as Trinity. This doctrine is fundamental to our faith as we cross over in this Trinity Sunday. Yet it is a mystery to us. It is a mystery because we are limited in our understanding of this divine revelation that God made of God's self because our understanding is limited by our finite existence. It's said that that great African bishop, father of the church, Augustine, while puzzling over the doctrine of the Trinity, was walking along the beach one day when he observed a young boy with a bucket running back and forth and back and forth to pour water into a little hole. And Augustine asked, he said, what are you doing? The boy replied, I'm trying to put the ocean into this hole. And then Augustine, as he grappled with the nature of God, realized that he has been trying to put an infinite God into his finite mind. God does not fit into our holes. To understand God as Trinity goes way beyond the capacity of our mind. The only way that we can truly understand God and the totality of who God is is not by our own understanding, but by the unspeakable and indescribable revelation of the Holy Spirit. Some things that we experience in life are indescribable. Yes. We can only communicate their effect on and importance to us by doing some indescribable things. Sometimes we can only communicate their effect on us by groaning. Sometimes the only thing that will do is a tear or, or a shout. Sometimes the best thing to describe our encounter with the Trinitarian God is to say, thank you, Jesus, for what you have done for me. For how do we express love in words? How do we express in words what we feel when we behold a majestic sunset or hear a symphony? How do we express it? How do we express in words what we feel when we truly love someone? We talk about our feelings, but when we finish, we still feel that love is more unsaid than it was said. How do we describe our experiences with God? What does it feel like to truly know that we are loved by God? We can't really express what we feel, so we come up with words and phrases that are inadequate, but they're the best we can do with the hope that somebody, just somebody will get some glimmer of understanding about what we mean. You know, sometimes all we can say of our experience of God is like my grandmother used to say, it's like fire shut up in my bones. Sometimes all we can say of our experience with the Trinity is that I feel joy bells ringing in my soul. And you know, I like to read the scriptures about how others experience the Trinitarian God. I heard Ezekiel say that he is a wheel in the middle of a wheel. Now what on earth is that? Well, I believe that Ezekiel is struggling in his finite mind to explain the infinite Trinitarian God in human language. But I thank God that I can imagine that the wheels represented God's spirit on the moon for us and Jesus is the simmering and guiding wheel. I heard it also said of him in the Song of Solomon that he is the lily of the valley. I thank God that some of us know him as our lily of the valley who will not forsake us as we go through the valleys of life. And beloved, never underestimate the importance of Christ in life's low valleys. Somebody said, I almost lost my mind last week. 
but I didn't. I almost died last week, but I didn't. I almost gave up last week, but I didn't. I almost went back to that bottle last week, but I didn't. What counts in life is what we actually did and not what we almost did. And when we are at the edge, when we are at our breaking points, what kept us from going over it? And some of us know that they can testify that it indeed was the lily of the valley. I can understand, beloved, when they used the term to describe him as the rose of Sharon. Sharon was an open stretch of land in Palestine where anybody could travel and gather the abundance of roses that grew there. The roses of Sharon were not shut up behind some garden wall, but they were accessible to everybody. And we ought to thank God, the Trinity today, that Jesus is ours, available and accessible when we are in need of his power and we are in need of his comfort and in need of his joy. I thank God for the Trinity. And I thank God today that I don't fully need to understand the doctrine of the Trinity to fully experience who God is. I don't need to know systematic theology in order to know that once I was blind, but now I see. I don't need to know that the Council of Nicaea met in 325 to discuss the issue of the nature of God and determine the homoousion that God the Father and God the Son were of the same substance. Thank God I don't need to know that to know that God indeed is a way maker. Thank God I don't need to know that rising out of the mist of time was a theologian named Ignatius who asserted that Jesus the Christ was very God of a very God. Praise God that I don't need to know that to understand that it was the blood shed on Calvary that washed me white as snow. Yes, God is Trinity, but I and you may not fully comprehend the greatness of this revelation. But what we can comprehend, beloved, on this Trinity Sunday is who God has been and wants to be in your life. And I believe we ought to be able to sing like uh, Reverend James Cleveland when he said, God is yes. my protection. Yes. God is yes. my all and all. God is my life in darkness. God is my all and all. God is what is it to you, my joy in time of sorrow. God is my all and all. Who is it to you? God is my today and tomorrow. God is my all and all. You know what else he is? He's a joy and the strength of my life. He removes all pain, misery, and strife. He promised to keep me and never to leave me. He never, ever will fall short of his word. And I've got to do what? Fast and pray. Stay in the narrow way. i got to keep my life 